Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. We're close to Valentine's Day. You know, love and romance and passion and all that stuff. Fun fact, did you know that from a brain's perspective, love, well, romantic love that is, is seen as a neurosis? I kid you not. <laughs> Romantic love is a neurosis. That says a lot about love, but also about brain science. You know, that thing that is so important to us, so universal, which has a lasting impact on so many of us. If you knew how much I loved you, how much I still love you. Well, from a brain's perspective, it's a disease. Well, no, no, not a disease. It's a compensation mechanism. In the NBA, the Neurocognitive and Behavioral Approach, we call it a hyperinvestment. It's the root of our addictions and obsessions. Yes, addictions. It's a known fact that a man can only go three days without sex before dying. That's water. You think I'm exaggerating, right? Well, take a brain scan of someone deeply in love and someone on cocaine, and you'll see the same brain areas lit up. Seriously, addiction and obsession. Because think about it for a moment. Remember your first love? You just couldn't get enough of each other, right? Spending time together, talking, riding each other, sighing whilst looking in each other's eyes. You would see your loved one everywhere. When it wasn't the case. When not together, you would not stop thinking and talking about your loved one. You just couldn't get enough of each other. Whilst everybody else thought you were overdoing it. And that's the thing with hyperinvestments. For ourselves, we feel that our behavior is normal and by no means exaggerated or over the top. Whilst for the whole wide world, it's just too much. So normally, our prefrontal brain is the one in charge of our emotional control, our impulses. I am in control of my emotions. It's also the part that is responsible for our critical and rational thinking. Turns out brain scans have shown this part of the brain shuts down when we're in love and think about our partner. We basically just cancel our critical thinking when it comes to the other. We only see perfection and even the bad things are cute. Not because they are, but because there's a big part of your brain which isn't functioning right now. We basically become stupid. Now wait a second. So what you're saying is that all the pretty girls I've met lately are not really pretty? I would even go so far as to say there is a reasonable case there to plead temporary insanity whenever you make a big decision when in love. What kind of decision? Well, I don't know, stuff like having kids and spending the rest of your life together. So if you want a divorce, I would recommend trying the temporary insanity plea with the judge, you know. It has signs to back it up. Okay, so by now you probably think I'm just bitter. Well, I'm not. Look, I'm happily married. There are no issues there. I think I just got lucky in the end, to be honest. It's my wife who should be having second thoughts. <laughs> There is a biological and evolutionary explanation for all this madness. Seriously, falling in love and shutting down our capacity for critical thinking makes it way easier to decide to have sex with all the offspring-related probabilities that come with it. Little pink plus sign is so unholy. That ain't no etch-a-sketch. This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. You just don't think about it, or at least minimize the risk, or picture it way better than it actually is. So when in love, our malfunctioning brain serves an evolutionary purpose. I know, looking at it this way, it's not really romantic and stuff. Look, don't shoot the messenger. But love, beautiful, passionate, romantic love, comes down to a brain malfunction. Okay, I apologize. Happy Valentine. And don't forget to like and subscribe, but if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com. You join our 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain. Sharpen your mind.